The Denver Broncos are working on a contingency plan for tight end Greg Dulcich, which could include maybe putting him back on injured reserve. What options does the team have at that position? Plus, we give you an update into Wednesday's practice at the Centura Health Training Center. You're going to get all on today's episode. Good morning, Broncos. Good morning, Broncos country. Welcome into another episode of Good Morning Broncos, your daily bite-sized Broncos conversation. And hopefully you pour yourself a cup of coffee along the way as we break it all down here on Mile High Sports YouTube page. Mile High Sports is every team, every day. Please do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button down below here on YouTube so you never miss out on what's going on with Colorado sports. we got Colorado Avalanche coverage, Denver Nuggets coverage. You get the Colorado Buffaloes with what's going on with Deion Sanders, plus you get daily Broncos conversation here as well. You get all that here. Every team, every day. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports here in Broncos country. Good morning. I hope uh, hope you're doing well here today. Obviously, as the Broncos are gearing up for Sunday's matchup against the Green Bay Packers, the Packers two and three so far on the season, looking to come off of the bye week refreshed, getting some guys back healthy. They've been a team that's been banged up this year. That's the progress. That's the hope that they have. And they're taking on a Broncos team that right now, for the most part, is also getting healthy at the right time, minus a couple of players, as obviously as we talked about here. So let's open things up by discussing first and foremost the main topic of today's episode of the show. The Broncos are working on a contingency plan right now with Greg Dulcich and his hamstring injury. So what does that mean? Well, right now the Broncos are weighing their options from a roster standpoint as to what they're going to do. Obviously with Dulcich, this is his fourth hamstring injury in the last two years. They're trying to figure out, do we keep him off of IR and go through the recovery process, or do we put him on injured reserve here? Now, I think here's the bigger question, right? I think Denver's going through and they're trying to gather all the data here. Four hammies in two years. There's obviously a lingering problem there. I'm not sure. In my opinion, this is just my speculation. Are the Broncos maybe looking at, or is Dulcich maybe looking at, surgery as a potential option? I think that's something maybe to throw out there because this is something that has continued to hinder and impact him. And it's not the, a different hamstring. It's the same hamstring. Four hamstring injuries to the same hamstring in two years. And so maybe that might be an option here for the team, might be an option here for Dulcich. And if there's something out there that can help him get back to where he needs to be, then I think that the team is going to be invested in maybe exploring that option here. But – Injured reserve is a possibility here for Dulcich. Now, the NFL rules have changed, though, right? You can place a player on injured reserve twice and bring them back to return. Um, Denver has not done that yet. I think last year was the first year I was talking with Parker Gabriel, Nick Kosmeiter at practice yesterday. Last year was the first year I think you could do that. But I don't think that Denver is going to do that. I'm not sure. It just really depends on the outlook because here's the thing with Dulcich. He's gone through the recovery process, right? And he came back, and then it happened again. Last year, right, he had the hamstring injury in that Christmas Day game against, I think, the L.A. Rams, had the hamstring injury, had all of this time throughout the offseason to rest, recover, stretch, and do all that stuff. And obviously we saw in week one, bang, like he was going through training camp, just, you know, things were good in training camp. And then, bang, he has the one thing in week one happen, and all of a sudden now he's back to square one. So have to evaluate your options here. Um, in the meantime, Denver did make a roster move. They did promote wide receiver Lil Jordan Humphrey back to the 53-man roster. He was on the practice squad last week. Michael Bandy is back on the practice squad. A tale old as time here for this Denver Broncos football team here. But what, what does Denver do if they do put Greg Dulcich on injured reserve? We all know he's going to miss time. And he was a, a DNP in yesterday's practice. We didn't even see him on the side field at this point. But I think the thing we maybe need to keep an eye on here as it pertains to Dulcich is if he goes on IR, is the Broncos supplementation of Chris Manhurts, of Adam Troutman, of Nate Adkins, is that enough for the tight end position? To me, my opinion, no, it's not enough. Because here's the thing. Denver lacks an explosive playmaker at tight end. They lack a tight end, might as, I might as well say here, they lack a tight end that does, you know, that has speed. And you look at where Denver is at, Troutman, I think a reliable pass catcher, right? Probably, you know, a very solid blocker for them. But, man, he has no speed. He, he's not a real legitimate threat here for any opposing defense in the scouting report. Chris Manhurts only has 25 career catches in eight years. Big body, 
not as much of a threat in the passing game on scouting reports. Nate Atkins plays the hybrid fullback tight end option here. Maybe he gets a little bit more run going forward, but maybe Denver at this point, maybe they will look to elevate tight end Lucas Kroll from the practice squad, elevate him to the active roster, or at least maybe a game day elevation to see what he has from a speed standpoint. Because, hey, he had a really good preseason with the New Orleans Saints. Aside from that, look, and I don't want to harp on this too much, but this was why in the offseason when the Broncos decided to trade Albert Okawebunam, I was saying to myself, well, you need to have confidence that this tight end group can piece it all together. That if Greg Dulcich goes down with an injury, you're confident in Troutman, Manhurts, or Adkins stepping up here. And so far, we haven't seen that. And, and that's not a byproduct of them. I mean, it's just the system, and, and it's just who they are. Like, Troutman is not a speed guy. Manhurts is not a speed guy. They have size, and I think you can use that to your advantage, right? But you can't be running deep breaking routes with these guys. It's not – they're not going to fool anybody in that regard there. And for me – I think with Kroll, you have a guy who's at least an option to go downfield, you know, up the vertical seam across, and he's got some speed to him. And I think that's the one thing I like there. But that's why I was kind of saying, like, all right, well, hey, you're putting all your eggs in this Greg Dulcich basket, and you're losing a guy who has legit speed in Albert Okawebunam, who, look, let's be honest, last year was completely misutilized by Nathaniel Hackett and the coaching staff. And, look, had a great uh, preseason, had a great training camp, had a great OTAs. I watched him from start to finish. He he took some big big jumps here for Denver. So I, I just think that he's got this. He's got a speed element that Denver doesn't have right now, and you know he's not being used right now in Philadelphia. It doesn't mean that okay, hey, he can't come back to Denver and, and have success. I know a lot of Broncos fans like to bag on Albert O, which is so weird to me. But the reality is, Albert's got something that Denver doesn't have right now. That's speed, and that is a legitimate threat in the passing game at the tight end position. So. That's where things are at right now here for this Broncos football team, and Denver's going to look at every option possible here. And maybe look with Greg Dulcich's injury going forward long-term, does this maybe impact the overall optics of his long-term sustainability on the roster? Is Denver going to look at whether it's in free agency, whether it's in the NFL draft, or are they going to maybe look at a tight end? Like They have so many different needs, I feel like they'll have to address this offseason. I'll be very, very curious to see what they decide to do here, but – uh, we're going to continue to follow and monitor it. Obviously, the Broncos will practice today at the Centura Health Training Center. I'll be out there for that. We'll see what updates we have. You can get all the coverage at milehighsports.com. But let's go to our practice report, our injury report here for Denver coming into today. I mean, more importantly, you look at the injury report yesterday. Okay, players who were limited participants here, two safeties. Justin Simmons obviously continued to deal with that hip. There's just a lot of maintenance going on right there with him right now. His return has been good for the back end of the Broncos defense. He was limited with a hip. Kareem Jackson with a neck was limited as well. And, and for those of you that maybe this might be your first time watching, when you hear the term limited in practice, what does that mean? Well, it means that they don't participate in full team, but more so they're limited by participating in individual drills right position specific drills so for these guys defensive back drills they participated i watched them both uh during the media viewing portion of practice on wednesday we'll see if any of these guys upgrade from limited to full going into the week here but obviously for justin the the groin the hip has been something that's been bothering him since training camp so the team wants to be smart with not just going out there and forcing things right so they're going to take it easy with him and obviously if he's able to go on Sundays that's great um, but yeah that's where things are at here with Justin the only player as I mentioned that did not participate in Wednesday's practice was Greg Dulcich with the hamstring injury and I think there's some good news coming up here for the Broncos they're getting some guys back they're getting some guys who could make their season debut first off let's talk about DJ Jones now we all know he suffered a knee injury in the second quarter of the Broncos lost to the New York Jets missed the Kansas City Chiefs game last week he was back on the practice field on Wednesday, and he was a full participant. So DJ Jones more than likely should be back, should be ready to go this week as the Broncos and that defense are going to look to try to stop the run against Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. And if you can have good interior pressure, which, look, the Broncos haven't gotten enough of. DJ Jones, I thought, had a pretty solid game against the New York Jets. Finally got into the rhythm of where he maybe needed to be. But obviously the knee injury was a big blow and the Broncos were missing his presence a little bit for the rest of that game as Brees Hall went off there. So he should be back into the mix. Lloyd Cushingberry, obviously center, has been dealing with a quad injury the last couple of weeks. He was listed as a full participant. No problem there. I mean, even though he's gone into the last several games, it's questionable he's played. So 
not a concern there. But I think what Broncos fans are excited about here is as the team has now made this transition from Randy Gregory and Frank Clark, you've seen the emergence of Jonathan Cooper. You've seen the emergence of Nick Benito. And these two guys are the starters here. And they've they've earned that role. And they are playing really good football right now. And it's fun to see these guys. And I talked about on an earlier episode this week at GMB. I look at Benito Cooper and I look at Baron Browning and I say, okay, hey, amongst these three guys, there is a potential that one of these guys will become a superstar edge rusher here in the NFL. And I'm still confident at 110%. Baron Browning is on track to make his season debut this week here for the Denver Broncos. And he was a full participant in Wednesday's practice. We'll see if he's a full participant here at Thursday's practice. Then all signs will point to him making his debut. And more than likely in, in package situations, if you're going to have Cooper and Benito starting, more than likely you're going to see Ronnie Perkins and Baron Browning more than likely being that rotational edge package there that we're going to see for the Broncos this week is they're going to look to get after Jordan Love I'm excited to see what Barron's going to be able to do. Now, look, I think Broncos country, you always want to temper expectations for a player. Like, this is a season debut, right? He hasn't played football since last year, and he's been ramping things up in practice. So don't come in right away and expect he's going to go off for four sacks like in an ideal world. That would be great, by the way, if he did. But let him shake off some of the rust, right? Not playing this long and, and having to go through that layoff is tough. Um, so for him, it's also about just having confidence. Now you're back out there on the field in a live game setting, and you're coming off the knee injury, and it's really about just getting that mental confidence back as well. So I wouldn't come out here and say, hey, have massive high expectations here for Barron in his first game. Let him shake off the rust. But look, if he comes in and impresses, then hey, great. It's an outlier. We love to see that. So uh, I'm excited for that. I think there are a lot of different things that Denver is going to maybe look at this week here as they try to find a way to get their second one of the season. And I think a lot of the conversation right now amongst the fan base has a lot to do with the idea that they should tank. And look, I, I want to be very, very frank and very, very clear about this. Fans maybe embrace the idea of tanking more so than teams do. And look, it's hard. Like teams, you, I don't know if people realize you can get punished by the NFL for intentionally tanking and throwing games to try to get draft positioning here. You can get in a lot of trouble. You think Denver's going to put themselves in that situation? No. And also on top of that, we always, I think we fail to realize that there are so many people within the organization, right? Coaches, assistant coaches, their jobs are on the line. And so do you think they're going to intentionally throw games and lose their job? No, like folks, come on. And then players, players are competing for a job, you know, to stay on the roster next year, maybe for tape for another team going into next season. And it's like, you think they're going to intentionally throw things away. That's not how it works. And the idea of tanking, and I get it, look, Denver sitting at 1-5 and five is not where Broncos fans wanted them to be, but the idea of tanking is just such a stupid idea. And I've got people telling me, like, oh, why Why did the Broncos have to win this game? Why Why should the Broncos win this game? They should focus on losing. I, have you played sports? Have you? Like, if you've ever played sports, you would never even have that thought come into your head that, oh, you know, we should try to lose this game. I, I don't understand the mentality. Like, to be honest with you, and I'm going to be very, very frank here, sports and the discourse on sports has become very, very tiresome because the idea, okay, if you're not winning, okay, you need to tank. You need to intentionally lose games. And the solution is to cut fire and trade everybody, but nobody ever wants to provide a real solution. Nobody understands that in the most part. And look, I think that's where the emotional side of being a fan comes in for so many people, but folks, we've got to be able to use logic in a lot of these situations that we're talking about as it pertains to team building, as it pertains to maybe the vision and the direction, right? This is what Denver has done. Denver for the last seven years has cut, fired, and traded so many players, and they've never stuck with change. You have to stick with the process, even if it doesn't start out good at first. And I think that's where Denver is at here. Sean Payton, George Payton have a great relationship. And that triangle that we talk about with George Payton, Sean Payton, Greg Penner, that's what is going to eventually at this point, I'm not sure it's going to happen this season, but that's the process. These guys need to continue to work together to see where they can get this Broncos team. And I understand the frustration, the compounded effect of seven years in a row of losing, going on eight seasons in a row here. But I don't think you can group all of that with this year, even though this year is not so good. It's pretty ugly this year. But you have to let the process play out because this is the issue. People are impatient. And impatience leads to people making changes way too prematurely. So 
We'll see what Denver does going forward here. They'll be back on the practice field here this afternoon. We'll have all the written coverage and content at milehighsports.com. Just a reminder, hey, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Mile High Sports. Every team, every day, the Colorado Avalanche season is in full swing. They're 3-0. and They have a game here on Thursday night. And more importantly, you're going to get Denver Nuggets coverage. The Nuggets season starts up next Tuesday with the banner-raising ceremony, the rings that they're going to get, and they're hosting the Los Angeles Lakers. Make sure you check out Ryan Blackburn's Pick, Axe, and Roll podcast here on Mile High Sports. I'm Cody Gork, Broncos Country. We'll see you tomorrow for a brand-new episode of Good Morning Broncos. Go pour yourself another cup of coffee. Enjoy the rest of your day.